everybody. Welcome to another real-time revision. This is Brad Reed with the Inside Creative Writing Podcast. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different today with this revision. Rather than show you um, actual live revision, I wanted to go back to something that I discovered or something I was thinking about when I was doing revising um, kind of on my own uh, earlier today. Um, so uh, we're at the place in the story here um, where she has uh, stumbled into a kind of an abandoned house. Um, it's one of the first places that she comes to as she's stranded out in the wilderness and she's starving. So she's looking for some food here. She explores the house. There doesn't seem to be anybody there. She goes back to this back bedroom and uh, here's what she finds. I step toward the closet and that's when I saw it. A smear of violet red across the floorboards surrounding the armoire. Blood pooled and dried in the knots of the old wood. Boot prints in thick red ink stamped all around. Blankets thrown from the bed, soaking up the mess. So much blood. So much blood. Now, um, I've done a first very quick little pass-through revision on here. Um, I'm seeing things already that I'm going to go back and revise. But I want to show you um, what it was that I got thinking about this morning as I was revising. And it comes up here a little bit. So basically, she follows this trail of blood that she hadn't noticed coming in that leads back out of the house and um, down the road. So... Let me read this here just to get you up to speed with where I'm at. Uh, something I'd missed before, a trail of blood, boot prints on the floor, spatters on the debris, smears down the hallway, a blurred handprint on the wall, smudges on the threshold of the front door. The trail led down the porch steps and out onto the gravel driveway, a pool of blood just before the first downed tree where the drive met the forest, then a red smear where the body was pulled over the top. Red splotches stained the drive beyond and disappeared into the distance. And this is the section that I was troubled with this morning as I was working on this. Where had they gone? Was there a neighbor nearby, a hospital? Or were they still out there lumbering down the highway? Perhaps they had turned back and were almost home again. So this is something I notice that I do quite a bit when I'm rough drafting, where I have my character think in these questions. And... I, is, this has always bothered me um, in my own writing and in writing of others when a character just starts asking themselves these questions. And so I spent some time just kind of thinking about this 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 morning and reworking some of these sentences to figure out why this was uh, bothering me. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, right? Um, we have people, we ask ourselves questions all the time. Uh, but as I got thinking about this, I realized that two things were happening. One was that this really isn't uh, my character asking authentic questions. This is me asking questions as the author. So as I'm writing the stories, I'm rough drafting this. In my, uh, my own mind, I'm kind of setting up the scene where these blotches, this trail of blood leaves off, leads off into the wilderness. And I'm curious as a writer, right? Where where had these people gone? Where Are they going to be part of the story? Do they disappear? Um, would they go to a neighbor's house nearby? Um, would they try to make it to a hospital, um, or were they just out there kind of um, on their own, desperate, trying to find a place? So this doesn't ring completely authentically true with my character here. I realize this is actually my voice thinking about where my story is going to go from here. So that's part well, thing one that bothers me. Thing two that bothers me about this form of writing and questions like this is that I don't really, I'm not convinced that we think in questions. Um, now, I our our first assumption is of course we do right i'm i'm asking questions of the world all the time but i i feel like rather than thinking in questions what we actually do is we think in um possible answers so yes there's a question that is driving us and has us curious about something but i'm not sure that our thought is actually just hmm I have this question. I think immediately our minds begin to try to answer this question or submit possible answers to the question. Um, and that seems more authentic to a person's thought process, right? I don't think we think, where had they gone, right? Um, we immediately think, well, maybe they went this place. Maybe when they went that place. So uh, this is a an old revision here. I'm going to click back over to how I ended up changing this um, as I was revising today. Oh, a little, little circle of death. Here we go. So I'm going to scroll back down here on my other revision. I think we're right in here. Oh, look at that. Went right to it. 
So something I'd missed before, this trail of blood leading, leading out, uh, the body was pulled over the smooth bark, red splotches stained the drive beyond and disappeared into the distance. They must have been headed to a hospital or a neighbor's house for help. Or maybe they were still out there lumbering down the highway, leaving a trail of blood behind them. Um, or had they turned back helpless against the destroyed landscape and were almost home again? Now, I, there's something just about question marks I just, I just don't like. Uh, for some reason, this isn't letting me edit this right now, I think, because I'm in kind of this version history review. So I'm going to lose that question mark then and just make this kind of a statement. I think it still functions fine because all of these are or kind of questions, but they end up being more statements. So I think this works better, right? I think this is more authentic to how um, a character and how people think. So rather than ask uh, herself these questions that she doesn't really answer, instead we're assuming the question already and just giving the answer. So they must have been headed to a hospital or a neighbor's house for help. Of course, she's already wondering, where did these people go? So it's redundant for me to state that question. Where did they go? Um, the question is implied in her uh, attempt here to answer the question. So uh, something that I do quite a bit, uh, like I said, in my writing is these questions sneak in that are really questions I'm asking of my story rather than my character actually asking of herself. So uh, maybe this is a hint you could try. It's probably more of a stylistic choice than it is, uh, you know, a right or wrong thing in revising. But I think there's some compelling reasons to try to get these internal questions out as much as possible and just show our character thinking through these questions that can be inferred or assumed by our reader. So uh, we're going to wrap it up there today. A little bit short this week. Um, I've These uh, real-time revisions have been going on a little longer than I expected them to. Um, I really envision them, uh, envision them as just uh, you know a few minutes look inside how my revision is going and some of the techniques that I use and stumble across as I'm revising. So again, thank you so, so much for being a member of the Patreon team. It means the world to me. I hope you're finding some value in these real-time revisions. I'd love to hear from you um, online. You can email me or uh, respond probably the best place to do is respond uh, through the Patreon site. Um, any of these uh, videos, these real-time revisions, I'd love to have a little discussion about. So if you have comments, uh, suggestions for how you might have approached things differently, um, put them in the comments there at the Patreon and we can have a little conversation about it. That'd be great. Anyway, uh, until next week, we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.